Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 16 of the edited version of this NHL 24 Draft of Glory franchise mode here on my channel. Today we're going to be getting to the 2030 NHL Draft Lottery and it's going to be a fun one because there is a franchise player at the top of this class. We finished second worst in the league based on last season. If you missed that one, then you can go back and check it out. Of course, the Buffalo Sabres are the only team that managed to beat us out on worst record in the league as we only won 30 games this year. But let's take a quick peek over at the draft class because there is indeed a franchise sniper right at the top. And honestly, Carter Nesbitt would be an absolutely amazing addition to this team. There are some other players too. <laughs> Peaceful says he's getting harassed now. Um, <laughs> because he's back for the lottery every time he's been present for a lottery so far, according to chat and according to him and everybody. I'm not certain if that's been the case or not, but regardless, every time he has been in for the draft lottery, we have lost a lottery. We have the second best, second best odds this year, so we'll see what happens. But here we go. Without further ado, there's the lottery, and we move from two to four. Go figure. <laughs> Oh man, that's hilarious. All right, the Boston Bruins moved from five to one. So we would have actually been better off being better this year. Um, of course, no hard feelings. It's we, we can't win the lottery every single year. Buffalo got screwed out of it too regardless, but um, there's your top five teams. Newfoundland's gonna be picking four this year. So a lot higher than last episode or last live stream because yeah, this is... Uh, this is a good draft here, and unfortunately, I think we are just going to miss out at pick four on Chucko because Steven Chucko looked really good as far as what our team needed. Maybe, though, actually, yeah, no, we're definitely missing out on Chucko. He's number two ranked. So, really, guys, now it comes down to do we build out this absolutely ultra elite defensive core and take Ivan Zykov with the next pick? I think that could be an option. He's 6'1, so he's not bad as far as size goes he is an offensive d-man or do we take another forward sniper like what what's the plan here because i would have loved to have gotten steve chucko but we're not gonna get him unless he somehow falls in the draft but he's a he's a a gem so it's very unlikely that the rangers and the sabers both pass up on him the boston bruins get carter nesbitt so this is kind of history repeating itself as far as last draft of glory franchise with the growlers in 2022 in nhl 22 the bruins won number one overall franchise sniper that turned out to just terrorize us in the first round um like three years later or something like that but what do you guys think and which player should we be after this year <laughs> oh man this is hilarious uh peaceful power a <laughs> <laughs> all right uh still in the top five so yeah it's not that bad uh i i don't know about that peaceful we won the lottery two years ago so it's it was unlikely that we were gonna win it anyways but apart from those few top picks um i guess i don't have an ice player scouted there but that's fine we don't really need to scout him he's probably gonna be like top six so all right apart from those players let's see what else are we looking at here we got Zarkov, who's a gem that we could draft. We got, we have to go with Modin. Ludwig Modin looks so good. He's going to be probably the future of our crease along with Sanchez. Um, for whatever reason, Elijah Simon just didn't get scouted. Wait, was he in the, oh, he's in the central. What's going on there? That's crazy. I guess I just missed that. Uh, Gage Griffin... Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> you might be peaceful, but hey, it's memorable, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. Um, we're definitely taking Strudwick, though, with one of the picks, and then we want to get Mirrors, too. So it's going to be tough to get all of those guys, but we might manage to do it. Then there's those high elite goalies that we're not really going to have a shot at. Uh, there's a top four guy here in Zamnov who we should be able to get. But we'll have to wait and see. And then after that, not a whole lot else, if I'm being completely honest. Um, 
yeah, after that, the draft kind of drops off, which, you know, it is what it is. It, it could be a lot worse. It could be better, too, but it's okay. We'll make do with what we are able to land. And you know what? It, it might turn out to work in our favor, for all we know. We, we have no idea how this draft's going to play out as far as how players are going to develop, which guys are going to be good fits, which ones aren't. But let's get on to the retiring players here. And we're going to see Mark Shifley, Nazem Kadri, John Carlson, Taylor Hall, Mark Stone, Morgan Riley, uh, Brandon Saad, Jonathan Marcia. So Marshy finally hangs them up. So that is uh, that is a, a, a memorable retiree class for us as we lose Jonathan Marcia. So we also see Tyler Johnson, who played years for the Huskies and the Growlers call it quits. He was definitely a big member. <laughs> Vendetta saying more sad about Chucko. Yeah, I wish he had, if he had stayed at four, we'd have a good chance at getting him, but uh, unfortunately not there. Alex Iafalo and Alexander Barabanov also call it quits, so we're losing a bunch of players here. But yeah, Jonathan Marcheseau so became a legend on this team, no doubt about it. We never had David Kampf on our team, but that's okay. And let's just go and see who else on the Growlers retired. I think that was probably it, but you never know. Yeah, Barabanov, Marsha, so we're the two. We don't lose any goldies. I'm surprised Lankinen's still going. He would probably, like, if I was in Lankinen's shoes, I'd be like, nah, dude, I'm retiring. Screw this. As far as goalies go, Brian Elliott won 300 games. That's crazy. And then, yeah, Peter Mrazek, Martin Jones, and Jacob Markstrom all in that range, too. But, yeah, if we look at just how many legends um like newfoundland legends retired we had marcia so we had tyler johnson we had who else was in here uh alex iafalo alexander barabanov there's a bunch of them like that's four or five guys there that used to play on our team was sheldon dries ever on our team i thought he was maybe he wasn't no we never actually got him i thought we did but that is all good so yeah, that is it for the retirees this year. But yeah, what a retiree class as far as Newfoundland legends go. You gotta love that. And we see Kadri and Riley become coaches. And then a whole bunch of coaches retire this year. Do we lose anybody? Uh, maybe, no we do not. Perfect, all right. So, I don't think we really need draft interviews. I think we're good to go. Let's take a quick peek at the block, see if we had anything go our way, potential and rating wise, and doesn't really look like it so that is what it is and there's a Nigel there um but yeah Fucali, Cooper not really a lot of growth from most of these guys it's kind of been disappointing but uh yeah we'll have to wait and see Swanson hasn't really grown either hello Nigel what's going on we've got a very talkative cat in here right now come here oh he's he's busy now um, having a bath so all right anyways um, I thought we saw George's drop to like a low four I was like yo <laughs> fortunately that didn't happen um, but yeah for our draft picks this year we'll lay out our picks here in just a moment um, but we're pretty much ready to get to the draft I just so wish that we could trade up because man Chucko would be a fabulous player for this team so we are gonna just throw on a little save here just in case things crash or anything like that come on nigel no he's not jumping up okay he's just gonna sit here and meow at me for minutes if not hours so <laughs> all right so we've got pick number four obviously but then we're gonna have to work our way through the rest of it so oh what do you think you're doing come here ow take the claws out thank you okay so the Bruins will be making the first selection here, but let's see just what other picks we've got available. And all right, Nigel, what are you doing? <laughs> there he is. With <laughs> get your tail out of my face, goofball. Okay, so we've got pick four and then thirty-five. So thirty-five is not amazing. Okay, no coffee for you. No coffee for you. <laughs> Had to put him on the chair. Yeah, he's very loud. Um, he's usually very loud, though. Okay, so we got 4, 35, 68, 101, 1, 134, 
167 and 200. Okay, so those are our picks. Now we get to go through and determine the ranges on these guys as far as where we're drafting them. Okay, so what are you guys thinking? For pick four, what are we doing? Because it's very unlikely that we get any of the snipers that we were really looking at as far as these first three go. Um, so do we go with Zykov or do we go with Lapierre? Uh, Filatov's not an option because he's not NHL ready. So yeah, it's really just those two. So D-man easy. Okay, as long as you guys think so, then we will absolutely do it. We have, we have enough left wingers, like that's kind of the thing. Stack the D even more, yeah. We're, we're going to have a formidable top four defense here in the future. Obviously, we could get other guys like Zarkov or um, Lapierre, but yeah, I think I think Zykov is the right pick there. Even though he did fall a little bit, I think that is going to be the pick for us. So let's just punch that in. You guys will hear me typing away here just for a minute because we're just laying out all of our picks, of course. All right, so that'll be our first pick. Um, then after that, at pick 35, I think we're going way off the board and grabbing that goalie just to give ourselves a better chance of getting all those other elite guys a little bit further on. Because, yeah, well, we could get Kaltiainen or Goggle or th there's so many guys we could get. I, I think the only other guy I would maybe be interested in at pick 35 would be Dallas DeNicola. Um, but what do you guys think about that? Please let Chucko fall. If Chucko falls, man, that would be something crazy. <laughs> Chucko falls. That sounds like a place. Um, it's unlikely, but you never know. So, But I think, honestly, we're probably going to go with Ludwig Modin with our second round pick because he's a high, high elite goalie. Like, I, I think that just makes sense. High elite out of the SHL, goalie, hybrid. Yeah, we, we will be grabbing this goalie, no doubt about it. And he's young too, he's 18, so you know he's going to progress into something great. And then after that, we're going to lose our spot here. But after that, then it's going to be one of these next guys. It's going to be Strudwick next, probably. And all right, Nesbitt's 83 overall. That stings. That stings a lot. That one just hurts. That one just straight up hurts because he's such a good looking sniper. What league did he play in? He was in the O, wasn't he? Oh man, Cameron Nesbitt looks fabulous, man. Or sorry, Cameron, Carter Nesbitt. Looks fabulous. All right, well, now we sit here and pray and pray to the hockey gods that um, Chucko somehow falls two picks. Is it likely? Not at all, but could it happen? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it could happen. So, All right. Who else are we going with besides these guys? Um, we might get Zamnov. I doubt it, but we might. So, yeah, we're doing Modian with our second pick, Strudwick with our third, and then Stefan Mears with our fourth. You're probably right there, Real Divinity, but we're hoping and praying because you never know. Okay, um, yeah, he's probably gone second because he's a gem, so that's that's more so why. Strudwick is a little bit on the small side, 5'11", 179, 18, and yeah, all right. And yeah, there's no way... Well, we could get Zarkov with the second round pick, but we don't really need to do that. I'm really hoping we can get Marcus Zamnov with our fifth round pick. I've seen the AI skip gems, though. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes teams do actually draft on positional needs, so if one of the next two teams needs a defenseman, then maybe. Um, they've got 57 seconds left. I know you guys can't really see it behind the sign there that I've got, but... Yeah, um, sometimes the, those players do get skipped. It's not very common, but it does happen from time to time. Uh, 
Yakupov. What does a gem mean necessarily? It means they progress and grow a lot faster than other players do. So it, it means they're essentially going to become a superstar at some point. If they're elite, at least they're going to. Um, that's why I was like, maybe we take Danikola, but yeah, we'll wait and see. All right, down to the final 30 seconds here with the New York Rangers pick, and we will see how our lottery luck and odds play out here. So yeah, Zamnov's the only one where I'm really like, okay. A lot of steals in here. There's a few steals in here. Um, a good chunk of them. We can probably take Bazina with our last pick, and Chucko goes. Ouch. Look at how good he is, man. Steve and Chucko would have been... I would have been happy with that. Like, I genuinely would have been happy with... Also, weird, it said he had A-plus puck skills, and he's only got a three-star rating on them. So that was uh, misinformation there. But I would have been happy landing at number two and having the Sabres win the number one pick because, yeah, then we would have gotten Chucko. So, you know what? It is what it is. The Sabres get the pick next, and maybe Buffalo will take a D-man. You never know. They did just trade away Owen Power, so I'll have to wait and see. But uh, Avery Joseph looks interesting. Again, another gem, so probably won't fall, but you never know. Um, and then as far as we have three picks left, so we've got 134, 167, and 200 after we take all those elite players. And I don't know who we're taking in those ranges because, like, yeah, it's just, it's tricky to predict and pick out which players you're actually going to land versus which players are going to fall versus, yeah, like, it, it's just, it's just a tricky process planning out the actual draft. Yeah, no, gems definitely affect how players grow in the future. So always, not always take gems, but if you can take a gem over another player, like it makes sense for your drafting position, then do it because why wouldn't you? I don't really want to draft any of these guys like Klein, McTaggart, or Papa because they're all 20 years old. I'm okay taking this Kyler Denny guy a little bit later. Like we'd get him with our sixth round pick, but... Yeah, the, the back half of this draft doesn't look very good. So, yeah, we'll just stick with essentially whatever we can grab. But, yeah, it's definitely not the best draft class I have seen in recent memory. It, it, they did say it was going to be a little bit weaker, which is fair. It's actually pretty accurate. Yeah, no, he doesn't look bad for medium nine at all. I can agree with that. Um... Let's actually just go look at those other medium nines here quickly. Avery Joseph's from the Charlottetown Islanders, so that's actually a very close location. Why? That's a very close location wise, Newfoundland. Um, but yeah, as far as other top nine guys go here, like we're looking for later ones. You know, maybe we do take either Popov or McTaggart or Klein or somebody like that. Like we could take Klein. He, he looks okay, actually. He's not the worst player ever. Um, probably a two-way forward, but he's big at least. So, yeah, maybe we do go with at least one of those guys. Let's see if anybody else looks really good with their rating. Not really. And, all right, Joseph goes third. All right, so that is what it is. That's kind of what we expected. And, yeah, no surprises there as all those players go off the board exactly how we expected them to. So, yeah, we will be taking the defenseman next. Um, Steven Chucko, man, I, I wish, I wish, I wish we could have gotten him. He would have been so nice with the, the rest of our team and scheme fit and everything. Right winger again. This time I'll get a Q, and then we will get Zykov here. I believe it's Igor. That might be wrong. All right, so, yeah, with the fourth overall selection, no real hesitation needed here. Ivan Zykov will be the Newfoundland Growlers' fourth overall pick, and he looks pretty solid. Good shooting, good puck skills, decent skating sense, his physicality, and then the defense is a tad bit questionable, but that's why we'd be putting him alongside probably Levshinov. So, all right, Ivan Zykov, welcome to the team. 80 overall, you know what? We can't complain there. He's, of course, number 52. Of course he's number 52. Yeah, he, he is probably the best for us to take, but, I mean, obviously getting the center would have been better, but, 
that's okay. You can't win them all. So, <laughs> all right, let's see how badly the Penguins botch their top five pick again, and they do it again. God, Pittsburgh, you got to be better. <laughs> Boris Filatov is just going to be an absolute bust, guaranteed. If only we could trade up. Exactly. If we could, we'd have a stack team. It would be stupid how good our team would be. But, uh, yeah, no, Filatov, fall, or Filatov gets picked fifth, which is so dumb. And then Lapierre goes sixth, and he looks fantastic. Yeah, he's going to be a nice player for the Coyotes for years to come. We probably, sh not that we should have taken Lapierre, but we could have taken Lapierre instead. Um, and he would have fit the left wing where Tuzolino's kind of struggled. But you know what? It is what it is. We get, we're going to have this absolutely filthy defensive core for the future. So I am quite happy with what we've done so far and where we've gotten players. So we will just, you know, stick with our decisions. And he's a left-handed. I believe he was Estonian. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure he was out of Estonia. <laughs> oh, man, that's mean. That's funny, but that's mean. Trade Tuzolino for Chucko's jockstrap. Yeah, honestly, though. Um, Nicholas Byron looked really good. Ty Paulus was really good. Let's see, anybody else? Mestre goes to the Oilers. Oh, that's filthy. Yep. Yep. Mestre was the only player that I would be like, yeah, we're taking him over that high elite goalie at this point in the draft. Everybody else, I could care less, honestly. Like, we're, we're taking the high elite goalie. <laughs> Unless there's an NHL-ready guy, which there is not. So, all right. Um, yeah, there's Zarkov as well, but we're not taking him either. We are instead going to go with the better potential in Ludwig Modin and left-handed Swedish goalie no real question that we're taking him yes he is only 50 overall but yeah no no way we were passing up that opportunity to draft a guy like that even in the second round like it's it's a good pick so all right so we'll go over to pick 68 now and at pick 68 we will see well let's see if anybody else good comes off the board Ray was okay, Kaltianen was okay. A lot of okay players in round two here. But yeah, Zarkov was 61 rated at 19, so that's pretty solid, but again, I get the feeling Modin can grow that much within a season. Just simply based on the high elite potential. Like that just, I love getting high elite players. It doesn't happen all that often, but when you do, oh, it's nice. Oh, it's nice. So, all right, for the next pick here, we are going to go down way off the board, which is okay. And we are going to take Leonard Strudwick with the next selection. And he is a left-handed Canadian. I do track the handedness and stuff like that on these players. So being able to do that is good. Um, getting an NHL-ready D-man in the fourth round, that would be insane. That would genuinely be insane. Um, I don't think we ever will in this draft, but you never know. Or not just this draft, but any of our drafts. But we'll have to wait and see. All right, so Strudwick's 49 overall. Uh, apparently he wears number three, so a bit of an interesting number for a winger. And, ooh, Brulier was actually pretty solid there. Let's see how the rest of these picks go. And lots of top nine guys for the most part. A couple starters here and there. And... There was a medium, I think there was a medium elite, I might be wrong, or a medium top four somewhere that I saw, but I guess not. All right, and with our next pick, we are taking Stephen, 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 I'm going to say Stephen, Stephen Mears out of Denmark and the Liga, and he's a right-handed sniper, which is a nice change of pace. We don't really have a lot of right-handed guys on our team to start with, so yeah, taking a right shot left winger in the fourth round sign me up sign me up all day and he's 48 rated so nothing insane but we will take it and all right now we get to simulate all the way over to the pick where hopefully we're going to get zamnov and i doubt we did but you never know all right so shores is a high starter 58 rated so pretty solid there and then there was another high starter somewhere in here too if i'm not mistaken did he not get picked 
Hold on a second. Did that high starter not get picked? Oh, let's go. Marcus Zamnov is the next player available. Okay, I think we have to take him. Unless... Did I just miss where that other high starter got drafted? I think I did. Yeah, no, I absolutely did just miss where that other high starter got picked. So... Oh, there. Lefebvre. Right right after us pretty much um only 47 rated so we'll take the medium elite all day over that but we are definitely going rough year for the centers yeah it is but you know what it's okay we can't load up on centers every single year it's it just is what it is but um but yeah we're definitely taking marcus zamov we need a top four player in the fifth round like yes please He's probably going to fill out the bottom end of our defense here um, within the next few years because he is big, he's strong, he's a little bit slow, but that is all good. He's a fifth round pick. So Marcus Zamnov, 49 rated. Um, I like that, number 48. That's a, that's a bit of a cool number. Um, and I totally missed the player numbers on all of our other guys because I do try to try to pick out our player numbers so that they all work nicely. 31 for Modine. Um, Strudwick was number three, which was, I, I said, I did note that was an interesting number. And then I never got Mears in number 25. Okay. All right. So he's too big. You think so? Or he's big too. He's big too. Sorry. I read he's too big. <laughs> um, but yeah, Zamnov's going to be nice for where we get him. As long as he can develop over the next three to five years, we're going to be fine. So, all right, we see Popov get picked there. Same with Klein. I get the feel in. Yeah, Reason's gone. He would have been pretty nice. Uh, Ryzen, however you say his name. And a lot of low nine guys going off the board. McTaggart was pretty nice, too, at 56 overall. Uh, Clifford was a backup, so good thing we did not pick him. And then for this next pick, we're going to just skim over a whole bunch of these players and we're going to go for the guaranteed medium top nine at pick 191 there in Kyler Denny. He is 19, um, but for a left-handed Canadian player, we'll take it. He's 64 overall. That's actually really good. Second highest rated player we draft this year by the looks of it, unless we get somebody crazy with the next pick. But yeah, we'll have to have to wait and see. Canadian, and then yeah, for our last pick of the draft, I really don't know who we're taking at pick 200. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I'm actually very happy with that pick because Denny might turn out to be something. I am wondering, did he play three years? Nope, he is actually 19. Sometimes it, it'll say they're 19, they have a late birthday, and they're actually turning 20 because it'll show three years worth of um, worth of WHL playtime. Ooh, this guy was kind of good, Dante Drake. Not bad for a late round pick. And then, all right, Edler was pretty sad looking. Same with Perrin there. Denim Denny. Denim Denny. Interesting uh, nickname there. I am interested in this Connor Fisher guy. We might look to draft him. As again, he is he's young. He's 18. He's only played one year, so... Apart from that, though, uh, not really a whole lot else. All right. Um, I am indeed peaceful. Yes, 3 p.m. Friday is going to be the next stream date. Um, that's the only time I can. So, all right. Uh, you know what? Let's just send it on Connor Fisher. I think that's the right call, unless you guys see somebody else where you're like, no, take this player instead. Like, I, I just don't really think there's anybody else we need to take here. Yes, yeah, correct, peaceful. Uh, 3 p.m. Friday. So. Like, I don't really want to go with Yakupov. He's going to be, like, a low 7th, maybe, uh, I don't know, low, I, I don't even know. Go risky, you think so? Like, I, I, I want to go kind of risky as far as taking Fisher goes, because he's only 2 bar. Um, but he's a guaranteed grinder, which a grinding center in our bottom 6 wouldn't be bad. We're really kind of drafting based on team needs here at this point. We all love being risky at times. Yes, it's true. It's true. Um, but yeah, I don't know who else we'd go with here because he's 18. Like he's not a super risky pick if he doesn't turn out, but 
What do we need? We need depth. Absolutely, we need depth. That is the main thing. You like Fisher? Okay. That's I, I like the feedback. Uh, Will Veshi, I have no trust in. Grinders are good. They can be good. They're perfect for the bottom six. So let's go with Connor Fisher. That's going to be the pick. And he's spelt kind of normally for Fisher. He's a, he's a Q pick as well, so that's not bad. Center grinder. He's big. 6'3", 202 at 18. All right, let's see how Connor Fisher turns out. Probably medium bottom six. Yeah, but you know what? That's okay. Too late. We already did it. <laughs> That's honestly one of the first um, bottom six players we have picked since we started, like since we did the year one draft. Grinder's usually good for the draws. Yeah, he's got 63 face-offs already, which is pretty good considering he's only 52 rated. But uh, you know what? Let's see. Oh, my. This game. Dude, this game. Are you kidding me? Miles DeMello that we had, like, no scouting report on was just immediately... A better player and he was 58 rated are you kidding me oh my god yeah he is going fishing for ice time yeah we're gonna pretend that didn't happen oh my god <laughs> oh wow that was probably my biggest miss of maybe the whole series so far ouch Oh, that one stings. Like, I thought I thought not winning a top three pick here stung. No, we got we got an 80-rated D-man out of it still. Not picking Miles DeMello. Ouch. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That was bad. Yeah. I, I got nothing. I got no response. I'm just shocked based on the fact that the next player was a 58 rated low elite playmaker. That, hold on, was he, is he 19 at least? Because if he's 19, I don't feel quite so bad about it. Yeah, he is 19, but still. Um, yeah, dead. Dead, that, that killed me. That just killed all my hope and faith in my scouts. Because DeMello was in the OHL, he's, I think he's, to be fair, we were missing some later OHL picks, but, oh my god, that one just, he pro, was probably showing up as, like, low bottom six, even though he was probably only, like, one bar scouted or something like that. I'll have to go back and look on the recording. Oh, is that another Harrison Georges? There is another Harrison Georges, this time drafted by the Montreal Canadiens. Honestly, probably going to end up around the same overall rating and career path by the end of their careers. Um... Only problem is that we took one in the second round. Montreal got to take theirs in the seventh, so. Oh, oh, Jackson Humphreys is kind of nice with it, too. What a pick by the Capitals. Oh, his long-lost, yeah, twin brother also named Harrison Georges. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, so that was it for the draft. Um, apart from that one botched pick, we did pretty good, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm not upset with the draft. We got four elite players still. And what do you guys think? Do you think we should, because um, we already have a number 52 in Weston Holloway. So we do 25 for Zykov. Do we do, like, well, we can't do 25. Sorry, that's um, that's Tara Vinan's number. But do we do number seven? Do we do number four? Do we do, like, what, what number do we give him? I kind of like number four. I think that would look really good on him. But we will have to wait and see. 55 for Zykov. Okay, interesting. That is a very, very much a defenseman number. And PRV was the last pick there. But yeah, you know what? Our first four, five, our first six picks were really good in that draft. It's just that last one just stung. Just stung. It's the only way I can put it. We just, we essentially just shot ourselves in the foot with that pick. We could have had a low elite guy. And instead, we did not get a low elite guy. <laughs> So yeah, um, honestly, pretty good draft still. We have a decor for the ages now. Um, this team is just going to be so absolutely amazing once we actually get to the point where they're all progressed and... I take the blame for that lad. No, 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 it's all good, peaceful, no way. What you should be blaming yourself on is a lot. No, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That's... <laughs> 
jokes, all jokes, all jokes. You know what? We were we were destined to not win a lottery here. We've won three at this point, so I, I'm all good with where we're at. <laughs> And honestly, this team is looking very, very good for the future. Um, <laughs> I'm all here to get bullied, trust me. <laughs> no, you're good, Peaceful. We, we appreciate you being here, even if we don't win a lottery from time to time. Exactly, Real Divinity. We love you, Peaceful. That's why That's why you're still here. That's why I, that's why I haven't banned you from... <laughs> I'll ban you for like three minutes when we're doing the lottery there. How about that? That's uh, There's an idea. <laughs> no, all, all jokes aside, though, that was a great draft still. We landed some fabulous players here. You look at our unsigned group of players, like... We've got defense galore here coming up. We're going to be just fine. Every time I've seen the lotto, you've lost. Yeah, exactly. It's all good. It is all good. Because um, we still got our number one picks that we needed. The ones I never saw I want. we won. Yeah, exactly. And that is all good because you look at the number one players we got. Like, Vasiliev has kind of not been great, honestly. Like, he's been okay, but hasn't been the best player on this team by any means. And then DuPont... DuPont's the real deal. He's going to be really good. He's only 21 and already 89 rated. And then, you know, we've got Weston Holloway's actually looking really good, too. I'm very happy with how his progress has gone. And, all right, what do we got for extensions coming up here? Now that I'm looking at it, um, we're going to be able to extend, I believe, Holloway and DuPont after this season. Yeah, so that's going to be good. And yeah, we, we have got a team in the works here for sure. Like Sanchez is now pushing NHL status, which is great. Um, Delmore should be playing in the NHL. That's where he will be playing because we need him to play there. But <laughs> never met a peaceful massachus what, what, what is that masochist I, I don't even know what that is um oops almost hit the wrong button there okay anyways we are to the off season we're gonna get some re-signing done and this coach is definitely not signing an extension with us i can pretty much guarantee that oh actually you know what maybe he will maybe alan ludeman will so we'll demote this guy just for now put him as interim head coach and then he'll pop down which will be fine and then we'll just rearrange all our staff and then this guy wants to be the AHL head coach, which is awesome. And then we will sign this guy as whatever position he wants in the coaching staff for the AHL, at least. And then we have got a ton of scouts to resign. So let's get it done. I'm pretty happy with how the drafting and scouting and everything's gone so far. We've landed the majority of the draft picks and steals that we've wanted. And we've only missed on a few, like a, a very small handful of players and picks, so... gotta fix my scouts as well yeah it takes it takes some commitment to actually get your scouts fixed and going but once you do it's totally worth it you can have nightmares about fisher yeah me too me too that was uh <laughs> that was a pretty brutal one but you know what it happens so can't really be that upset about it but yeah we will be extending dupont and holloway this upcoming year both had great seasons so they are probably going to be a little bit expensive but that's okay. Oh my goodness, Michael Carcone's 84 rated. That's crazy. What kind of a season did he have in comparison? Yeah, 37 points. That's that's a guy we're going to keep around for as long as we can, and I have no problems doing that. Um, Sean Walker will probably get an extension here again. That's just a massive one. But yeah, Ivan Zykov is going to be yet another addition to an already strong decor that's hopefully going to be a stacked decor here in a year or two. So... You know what, if we have that insane a top four. <laughs> yep, yep, you are probably correct on that. All right, we'll pay Kuzmenko as much money as we can with the two-way contract. Robinson's stuck around for a long time, so we might as well keep him around for a little bit longer. I am just interested now as to which players we're going to have to release to clear up space for other guys that we've already signed, things like that. Um, yeah, we got a few guys, Castles and Goudreau, 
Um, anybody else? Swanson. Yeah, we got to gotta sign Jay Swanson, get the stash set up. That's going to be a, a fun little thing to do here. And then for goalies, I think we want to... Do we want to sign Bobolev? More than likely over Svitov, because Svitov hasn't really played at all. He hasn't played since 2027, so I think we release him. I think we're probably going to release Barrett as well. Actually, uh, maybe not. Maybe we release Kevin Lankinen at this point. He's 35. He only had three shutouts and an 889 this year. Only three shutouts. That's actually like his best season ever. <laughs> um, okay, but we are going to release Kevin Lankin in all honesty. We're going to release him. Carconi. He, there's a couple guys he doesn't like on the team that are kind of shoe-in regulars. So yeah, we'll release him. Then we'll re-sign Barrett. And we'll re-sign Svitov and Bobolev. And then that should be six goalies for now. Uh, we're just going to do one year for Svitov because I just don't really trust that he's going to grow. Bobolev will sign, but we might end up buying him out if he doesn't grow. And then, yeah, we got Ryan Fanti there, so that's all good. Unfortunately peaceful, um, Artemi Panarin retired two seasons ago, <laughs> so um, no bread man to sign, unfortunately. As much as I wish we had him or had the opportunity to sign him, we simply can't. Fanti for the win, though. Yes, he is still going to be sticking around. And then we're going to sign Stamkos for sure because he's actually he's looking okay now. Like He he might be a, a bottom, like a 7-8 a defenseman by the time we get to him being like 28-29. We'll see. We'll see. He might actually make it up to there. Um, but yeah, at this point, we now have our top 3D in DuPont, Holloway, Levshinov, and then we're going to have Zykov and Kirka as well, and it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. Three to four years now. Yeah, exactly. Like, sometimes he retires super early. Other times he just sticks around forever. Like, it's it's hard to tell what's going to happen with the retirees. So, uh, Darren Radish coming off an absolutely massive year. Honestly, he's been pretty good for us. Like, I we might re-sign him. We'll see about that, but... As far as our defense goes, do we even really need Sean Walker at this point? Like, I'm looking at it, and we have Holloway, Zykov, and Zamula all on the left side. Kirka is a right-handed shot, so he should probably play right side. But then we have DuPont, or sorry, then we have, yeah, DuPont, Levshinov, and either Colin or Kirka. And I think we're good. Fanti needs more NHL time. We could do that. We could definitely do that. And then what we'll do, I think... Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Yeah, the D is so stacked now. It's going to be good. Um, but what I'm thinking for the goalies is that we'll run... We'll run a Delmore, Barrett, and Fanti threesome in the NHL. And then we'll run Sanchez in the AHL to just dominate for one more season. Unless he's like 82 rated by the start of next season, then we'll run him as the minor starter again. Because Delmore is also a minor starter, but this way we should be able to get a pretty questionable record out of all of those guys unless Ryan Fanti just goes off. Fanti's the man, not Randy. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Fanti might be the man, but we are going to have Delmore in for a lot of it too. So what do you guys think? Do we extend Sean Walker just as more of a cap-eating contract? Like he was 19 mil this last year, which was good for what we needed. Um, Logan O'Connor was also a big chunk of change, but he was actually pretty good. So we'll sign him to one year if he wants to sign. We'll see. We definitely need more right wingers though as well. Like that is an area where we are pretty heavily struggling. Captain Canada, how he's how's he doing? He uh, he's actually looking pretty good. Uh, where is he? Rogers. Just a little further down. He grew to a 72, so he's uh, he's looking pretty good for where we got him. I'm, I'm quite happy. He had a monster season. Check pending free agency. I did that before the very last um, the very last day last season, and we bought out three players that we didn't need to. So um, yeah, but Cole Rogers did absolutely amazing. So he's going to be getting NH or, uh, AHL time this upcoming year. As far as the other left wingers go. Um, I don't know if we're signing 
any of these guys in here. I think we should sign. Well, Sherwood doesn't want to sign, so we'll probably have to pay him a lot. But Myers wants to sign. Well, how are we doing on contracts? Uh, we had five additional contract spaces. So, yeah, we'll, we'll sign Zahorno and we'll sign Myers. And, all right, centers. We're pretty set on centers. Tiemannan's going to need an extension here coming up soon, too. That's going to be good. We will sign Castles because we drafted him pretty recently. He actually did all right, 63 points this last season, so can't be upset with that and all right let's just advance a couple days and then we'll go check out the free agency and everything or the pending free agents and everything we get our coaches back we get okay we don't get wise back so we'll have to go and offer him another contract uh, we do get Myers Robinson Kuzmenko we don't get Logan O'Connor don't get Blake Lazat or Michael Carcone all right that kind of stinks um, we do sign Rodgers, we don't sign Zahorno, we do sign Goudreau, Castle, Stamkos, Georges, Barrett, Svitovs, Pobolev, Zykov. All right, so we got most of those guys, um, but there were quite a few expiries that we didn't get still. So we're going to go and sign Michael Carconi to a one-year, like, $4 million deal. See if he can actually really perform as a uh, middle six player this year. That's what we're kind of aiming for with him. Logan O'Connor, we're going to drop a little bit more. He said he didn't want to play for the team. All right, so screw him then. We'll we'll let him go. You know what? Fair enough. He he. Uh, we gave him his bank, gave him his payday. But that's the thing is those guys will sign cap eating contracts, and it's not really a big deal. Um, we'll go 1.5 million for Lazat for the next year, which I think is fair. Zahorna needs more money, which I mean, fair enough. Um, and then we want to sign Swanson and Valacrete. Those guys might progress still so that's why we're gonna do that and all right i think we're gonna release yeah we'll release not sean walker we'll release logan o'connor get out of here misa he didn't want to play for us anyways um goalies are all good all right let's advance another day we get more scouts back because that should be good of course michael carconi signing a four million dollar deal and all right we do get pretty much all those guys so we're down to just these three and we have $33 million in cap space, so we need some cap filler contracts here. Otherwise, we're going to be not very good anyways, lol, lol O'Connor. Yeah. Um, what are we doing? Pending free agents. All right, what are we looking at here? Anybody really good that's unsigned? Was Trochak undrafted? No, he got drafted by Florida. Yeah. Nikita Kucherov's still around. That's crazy. Um... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's why we didn't keep him. We could get Artem Zub, but that doesn't make any sense because we need forwards more than defense. Um, Dakota Josh was drafted, unfortunately. Yep. Anybody else? Nashville got Parsons late. Yep. Same with Evans. That's our Sean Walker. Yeah, not really a whole lot for undrafted guys this year. Like, maybe, no, even McBain's drafted. Man. <laughs> we could get Jack Eye, but I, I don't think we're going to do that either. Was Paul Cotter undrafted? Nope. Nothing in free agency. Yeah, exactly. So, I know James Stefan is, so we could probably get him because, yes, he is on Washington. But if he makes it, I don't think he will make it to free agency. Yakov Trenin was a second round pick. Why do I think he was drafted later? Asplund was also a second round pick. Man, man, I, I am just missing on these. Is that Cole Cylinder? Oh man, Cole Cylinder did not turn out. Was there a Brock Caulfield there? I didn't see him. My bad. Um, I might have missed him. I didn't, yeah, I didn't see him there. Uh, what position does he play, though? He's a right winger, isn't he? I might be wrong on that, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing him there. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to go like this. We're just going to sort by potential and sign up a few. Oh, Lane James. 
is there, but uh, obviously we can't go for him. Yeah, there's very few players that we could actually sign in here. Yikes. Yeah, this is not a very good group of free agents this year. Usually it's better, but I guess not. All right. Um, Armstead got drafted. Yep, Feldman got drafted. Yep, there's a whole bunch of them. Yeesh, okay. Um, well, I guess those are pending free agents. Let's see where Brock Caulfield is. I'm interested in this. Top nine, I think. I think Brock Caulfield's a top nine player. Holy, look at how good Gavin McKenna is. I haven't really looked at the top players in the league here. Ryan Rubrick hit medium franchise, not surprising. Gavin McKenna's 94 overall. Connor Bedard looks filthy as well. Um, DuPont's going to be good, though, still. Like, I'm, I'm excited for him. Evans, oh my goodness. Joey Evans hit medium franchise, too. Of course, you know, James Haggins did. That kind of makes sense. There is a lot of... McKenna is not better than Betsy by, like, one rating. Yeah. <laughs> Two years difference, though, as well. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's some crazy players in there. Adam Nemich is a high elite. We probably should have drafted him. That was unfortunate. Oh, well. Um, you win some, you lose some. How is Matt Bay Mishkov not signed right now? What is going on there? Yeah, that, that sounds very nice. Uh, Prob Patal looks really good on Calgary, my goodness. Um, anyway, sorry, we got, got a little distracted here. We're looking up Caulfield. That's a great question. I don't know. Sometimes he just regresses as he gets older. Caulfield's on the Predators, and he's 79 rated, so um, we might be able to sign him. Hold on. <laughs> Peaceful saying he's the only reason why the Wild are in the NHL. Yeah, you're probably not wrong there. Oh, no, that's, that's not entirely true. They actually have some pretty good players. Dang, Preds. Yeah, I know. It's all good. Um... All right, we're just going to re-sign this guy, give him a better roll. Should be enough to sign him. I, yeah, we'll see, Ben. I think we, we might get up to that um, defensive group at some point. It's going to take a little bit longer, but not much. Like, really not much longer, honestly. Um, I think we are giving the captaincy to Levshinov this upcoming year, though. I, I just think that is the right call in spite of Vasiliev and DuPont and some of these other guys being really highly rated. You're in 2034, though. Yeah, so give it four more years, and then we'll see. Um, all right, let's just make sure all my scouts are looking good. Are they all signed? Looks like it. Beautiful. All right. So I think we're pretty much ready to oh, Excuse me. hit free agency here. Um, the only other thing we're going to do is we are going to go and just drop some massive dollar amounts on these guys because we need to fill some cap space for now. He had a point on half the Wilds goals. Yeah, yeah, that's fair, peaceful. Like, the only argument I have is they have drafted really well in the past few years, so that's my only argument saying that, oh, like, maybe he isn't the only reason they're really good, but he's, he's a main reason why they're really good. I can't argue with that. Okay, we just did 19 million for, what's his name, Sean Walker, and we're going to do like 13 million for Kiefer Sherwood. I think that's fair. We'll go like 13.5. Boldy is super underrated. He's such a good player. I'm so mad the Oilers did not. I, I'm so mad the Oilers did not draft Matthew Boldy over. Philip Broberg, like that would have been just would have been fabulous. All right, so we get Logan Wise. We should get these two guys. Yeah, we do. All right, so let's send to free agency. 
Excuse you, Logan Wise didn't sign? I thought he said he did. Okay, I totally just misread that then. All right, well, let's look for an AHL associate coach, and I guess we'll go with... Yeah, that would have been... That would have been something. These coaches all suck. Like, they are not good. Here's a question for you guys. Do we dare put Ivan Zykov in the AHL for a year? What do you guys think about that? Do we let him just cook down there and just take out the entire AHL and be the best player there? Because that could be an option. Like, that's kind of how I'm thinking right now. Because he is 80 rated. He's going to be good. He's signed guaranteed. Ben, you say yes. Okay. Anybody else that thinks we should leave Zykov in the AHL and just let him cook for a year? He might. He might develop faster. That's that's what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, I, I think that might not be a bad idea. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's where my brain's going right now. All right. We are going to have some pretty big contract extensions to sign here. They're not going to be big big but they're gonna be like yeah we got some money we, we got some money to throw around here yeah Vasiliev is turning medium elite soon you were correct on that we all know that's coming um it's it's sad but it is what it is so all right let's get to the contracts here we're gonna do these extensions to end off the video because DuPont and Holloway I kind of wonder if Vasiliev would have grown if we had hit him with like a two or three year contract that is the one thing I'm thinking yeah, it shouldn't be so low, and it is, so. It's just because he hasn't grown. Oh, my. Jesus Christ. Um. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. Landon, buddy, you haven't even scored a point per game yet. Um, you only have... He doesn't even have 100 points yet. Holy Jesus, I thought we were doing well on our cap savings, and it's all immediately going to go out the window. Don't tell me he wants a lot of money, too. Yeah, okay. I, I can get behind a... It's going to be under $9 million, but I can get behind a contract that looks a little bit more like this. All right, let's go 0.85 times, what does he want? 9.45 million. You know what? It's just over 8 million for Weston Holloway. I can get behind that. Um, it would be an 8.0, I don't know, 8.05 million. Th this is a good contract. I'm fine signing this one. 8 million bucks, that's going to be fine. I've got no problems with that. But man, oh man, um, yeah, this is, shit. All right, we'll sign Weston Holloway for that price. We have the money to sign DuPont. I don't want to pay him that much. Let's see what we can get him for for like one year. Do we dare? He's 89 rated. He's going to get better, but $17 million is far too much. This is tough. This is tough. I don't know what to do here. Try for it. Well, let's try. He wants 17.175. It's a $14.6 million contract at the end of the day. DuPont is going to be our number one player. There's 
no question about that in my mind at this point because he's the one guy, but... Ugh, this is a tough one, man. This is a really tough one. No, the, the thing, though, is that if we hand him a 17 or a $14 million contract as a 21-year-old, he might struggle a little bit. Yeah, okay. You know what? We're going to just let it roll for now. Um, that's my that's my call. I'm not listening to everything you guys have said because half of you have said, sign him now, wait, do this, do that. McCart's making 17, so... That is the one thing where it's like, okay, well, it's not that bad. But that's the thing is DuPont is going to be the next Makar, essentially. So, 14.6. Bro wants Makar money, and he hasn't won anything yet. So, that is the problem. He's going to be our best player. I have no doubt about that. It's really just more so a matter of... I don't want to pay him that much. This guy, though, look at this. Joey Evans, man. I am so jealous of the Montreal Canadiens right now. And they've got Caden Lindstrom, and they got Lane Hudson, and they got this Karen and guy, and, like, they... Montreal's loaded. Montreal is freaking loaded, but, yeah. Um, it's a $14.6 million deal for the next eight years. That will take him until he's 29. I... We're paying $22 million of our total cap space. To be fair, the cap is almost $100 million now, but yeah, the Habs being stacked, you love that. I, I got that. I got that peaceful, but $22 million for our top two defensemen, what is going to be our top two defensemen in Holloway and DuPont, honestly, isn't that egregious because if you went 11-11, if they were both franchise guys or something great fine it's just we're putting a lot of money into our defense yeah it would be 14.6 um he won't sign anything less i can pretty much guarantee that but do we dare do we dare he's trending the right way like i have no problems with that Ugh, it's just a matter of it is such a big chunk of the cap space Is Ben still in here? Ben, are you still with us? What, um, how much money is your Landon DuPont making in 2034? That's what I want to know. How much money is he making? Because I know you said he was dominating the league. I don't know. I'm like, I'm torn between, yes, he hasn't played that well. He doesn't deserve this money. And... This is going to be savings in the long term because he's going to get better. I, <laughs> oh man, I just don't know. I just don't know what we want to do here. Let's do team and then this one's going to be a lot more straightforward. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's a lot better. Um, we will do that one, obviously. Eight years at under two million bucks yes please um at the rule of 85 at 1.975 we're looking at a one point it's pretty much 1.7 so yeah we'll slap on a one point let's go seven five just to be generous <sighs> man all right that's yeah that's probably the best call I've seen up to this point. All right, we will do that. Thank you, Vendetta. Um, he's still going to be like 11, 12, 13 million, somewhere in that range. But we're going to sign this Ramo team in a deal for the next eight years because then he's 30 by that time. Um, man, that's just that's just tough with the contracts there. Like, that is what we're going to do is we'll play Landon Dupont as a 
top four. Like, he'll play second pairing minutes along with um, whoever we've got. It's probably going to be second pairing minutes with uh, Kirka, more than likely. That's going to be the case. And then, or Zamula, maybe. It, it'll probably be Zamula. Um, so then that'll bump down his performance, which... See, I'm just scared to do that too, though, because if he, we mess up his progression, then we're fucked. <laughs> like, simple as that. Sanchez could be a very nice extension. We're going to wait on that one as well, just for now, because I don't know exactly how well he's going to play. And yeah, I don't know exactly what we're going to sign him to yet either. We're going to wait on that one just a little bit longer, but you know what? yes sir <laughs> he's looking good like he we could sign him for that and I wouldn't be opposed to it because long term he would probably be the best goalie that we have apart from um apart from this dude who's at the very bottom right now is going to be three to five years anyways so if we have him signed up to that kind of deal I think we're going to be fine what, what do you guys think about Caden Sanchez do we dare offer him the five million dollar contract do we just offer him like a two-year extension and then pay him out big when he's like winning 50 plus games i think maybe we pay him out two years like that's probably going to be the best give him that like 1.25 million dollar extension not even hmm, the only thing that's tricky about actually it doesn't matter because it's going to be next year anyway so Let's go 1.15 for Sanchez for now, just for two years, and then that should work out nicely. Two years at 1.15. I'm just, I'm a little hesitant to big, pay out really big money on guys that haven't actually proven anything yet. And that's why DuPont isn't getting a contract yet either, so yeah. Um... I'm very happy with the Ramo Tiemann contract. I think he's going to be a great 3-4 center for us for years to come, especially considering the fact that he already put up a 32-point season in his rookie year. Like, we're going to be just fine. Okay, so that's all we're doing now for contract extensions. Um, that's pretty much where we're going to wrap up this video. Um, but, yeah, you guys are saying... All right. Yeah, if we pay DuPont 14 to 15 million, and yeah, exactly, if he only grows that by that much. <laughs> I love the comment section. You guys are great. You guys are great. But um, yeah, all right, let's advance just a couple days here, see how things progress. We get that Vaclav Prindis guy as a coach, and then obviously we're not making any trades, so we will get teaming in for that $1.75 million for the next eight seasons. It's going to be great. And then Caden Sanchez, 1.15 for the next two years. That's going to work out nicely for us as well. And all right, I think that is where we are going to wrap the stream up today. Thank you guys all for watching. It's, uh, that episode is definitely, definitely getting titled um, Cap Struggles. No doubt about that. Like, I, I don't know what else we would call it besides, yeah, like... <laughs> That's going to be such a tough payout to figure out over the next season that, yeah, I'm not sure how it's going to go. If DuPont is like 92, 93 rated by next season, then there's a better chance that we're going to we're gonna pay him out that much. But, yeesh, yeesh, that's all I can say. Holloway game winning goal tonight for the Oilers. Let's go. That's what I'm hoping for, Vendetta. We'll see it. We'll see it. But, uh, or we'll wait and see if that happens, but... Yeah, man, what what a live stream that was. A bit of a crazy draft. We got a little screwed on the lottery this year as it would have been nice to land a top three pick. Didn't happen, but we get a very good player in Zykov. Actually, I forgot to show you guys or do a few little player edits here, so we'll do those nice and quickly and then wrap up the live stream. But uh, DuPont negotiation struggles, exactly. That's, the, that's exactly what it is. So, all right, let's flip over here. Uh, hold on. We missed Zykov, so let's go take a look at Zykov because he will be 
I want to put him in the AHL next year. I think that is the the way it's going to go. DuPont negotiation struggles is probably the way to yeah the way to term that. And you know what? We're going to go with all true for uh, Zykov. That's what I'm feeling right now. I know we have a lot of guys with Warrior stuff already, so I'm kind of feeling the true gear. I think that's going to be a little bit a little bit more standout. And which ones look the best? Probably probably those ones. We're going to go with that. And then for his stick, we're going to swap out the Bower for a true as well. And I'm going to go with... Kind of feeling this one. So let's go with that one. Um, you guys were saying give him number 55. So that's what we're going to do. Um, yeah, the negotiations are truly difficult for trying to speculate and figure out how things are going to play out and everything like that. But yes, here's our newest first round pick, Ivan Zykov. Um, he's going to be rocking the goatee. He'll like that. And of course, it's cleanly shaven, but we'll have it fully grown out for the playoffs. And yeah, that is our newest player that we got in round one this year. He's going to be great. I'm really excited for him. Um, I am wondering, Jorg Kirka is here. We are going to edit him as well, give him number 91, because we talked about doing that, and I think that is the right call, as he does wear number 19, preferably, right now, but we'll swap that out. So yeah, there's Jorg. He's going to be, he's going to be good. Um, I like the equipment style right now. It just kind of seems to all flow together, even though it's all different pieces of equipment for the most part. And then let's go take a peek at his style. All right, no beard because he is, I believe he's German if I'm not wrong, but you know what? Because he's German, we're going to give him the full on beard when we actually get to that point. Um, all right, we're going to rock with just nothing for now. Maybe as he gets a little bit older, we'll start slapping the thicker beard on. But he is going to be, we're going to give him the full grow, full beard growth potential for the playoffs. If we ever make the playoffs. Um, but yeah, there we go. All right, you guys are heading out. Yeah, rebuild's almost done. It's getting close for sure. But um, yeah, thank you guys all for watching. Have a great day. We're just finishing off these last couple little player edits here and there. Of course, the last one I absolutely have to do for you guys, wherever it is, doesn't look like he's in here yet. Once he's in here, once we get Jay Swanson in here, then we'll do the Swanson stash. But that was the other one that I thought might be available and just isn't quite yet. But yeah, that is going to be it for me. Thank you guys all so much for watching. It's been a heck of a stream today. And yeah, playoff bound. Let's go manifesting it. We're, we're going to be ready. But uh, yeah, thank you guys all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in the next one.